Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. This is video I of the urinary system, and this time we're going to take a closer look at how the glomerular filtration rate is regulated. Remember how we learned in the previous video how important it is for those kidneys to maintain a pretty consistent glomerular filtration rate. And they can do that by somehow manipulating net filtration pressure. So let's take a look and see how they do that. By now you're familiar with the terms intrinsic and extrinsic regulation. We've seen it in the digestive system, in the cardiovascular system, uh, in various organ systems, just to name a few. And so these regulatory mechanisms play a role in the kidneys as well. So the intrinsic regulation occurs at the local level, meaning it's an auto-regulatory mechanism that is capable of maintaining the DFR even you know, regardless of what the rest of the body is doing. Now this is going to be the regulatory mechanism, that is the intrinsic regulation, uh, when we have normal blood pressure fluctuations. So, you know, you're not doing something out of the ordinary. We're not running away from a bear right now. We're not stressing out over a major exam right now. We're not working out at the gym. Um, you know, we're not bleeding out. <laughs> so this is when we're going through our regular minute-to-minute, -minute, hour by hour activities during the day, uh, except from, you know, serious working out or running across the parking lot. I think you know what I'm talking about. So what we consider normal blood pressure fluctuations is going to be somewhere between 80 and 180 millimeters of mercury, which is still, you know, a pretty high... Uh, pressure there, but not severely high, right? Um, during this time, your sympathetic nervous system is pretty much at rest. It really doesn't have much of an impact. And also our renal vessels are pretty well dilated at this point, okay? Now, in the next video, we will look at extrinsic regulation of glomerular filtration rate. And then we'll have to take a look at uh, neural controls, of course, we'll talk about the sympathetic nervous system's influence because that is the only nervous system that innervates our kidneys and talk about the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone ADH mechanisms, mechanism better referred to as the RAA mechanism. Now, the big difference between intrinsic regulation and extrinsic re regulation in the kidneys is that Intrinsic regulation is going to do anything and everything it can to maintain a pretty consistent GFR. So I'm going to write GFR here. That is what it's going to obsess with. Let's just anthropomorphizing it here. Well, the, while the neural and uh, hormonal mechanisms, they are going to primarily focus on making sure that systemic blood pressure stays consistent and that there's not going to be a major drop in system systemic blood pressure. And as they try to fix systemic blood pressure, it is going to have an impact on the GFR. So the GFR adjustment um, as a result of the neural and hormonal mechanisms is as a result of these mechanisms adjusting blood pressure, right? Do you follow that? So the intrinsic regulation directly affects TFR. Extrinsic regulation indirectly adjusts GFR. We're going to focus first on the intrinsic regulation and then we'll use a different video to talk about the extrinsic regulation. So in there's two mechanisms that are part of intrinsic regulation. And one mechanism is going to depend on a um, on contraction, relaxation of smooth muscles. So once again, we call that a myogenic mechanism. We learned about myogenic mechanisms when we learned about the actions of precapillary sphincters in the capillary beds uh, in the cardiovascular system. Um, so we're going to see a very similar uh, response here where... 
um, smooth muscle respond to being stretched. But we also have the tubuloglomerular mechan mechanism, and in this case, the macula densa cells are going to be playing a role in, in constantly tasting that filtrate, as I've mentioned before. So they're going to taste the filtrate uh, based on you know, what is present in this filtrate, what is the concentration of this filtrate, and how fast is it flowing. So the macula densa cells are really good osmoreceptors, chemoreceptors. The myogenic mechanism that is primarily going to um, in, depend on how much our arteriolar walls are being stretched versus not stretched. Ultimately, either one of these mechanisms is going to result in um, vasodilation or vasoconstriction of the art afferent arteriole. So let's take a look at how this works. So I made a very simple flow chart here that uh, will become part of a much bigger flow chart uh, eventually. So let's assume the following. Again, we're focusing on the intrinsic regulation and we're looking at your myogenic mechanism here in the light yellow area, while the tubuloglomerular mecha mechanism that depends on the macula densa cells is in this greenish area. So let's look at a scenario. Let's say that our systemic blood pressure begins to rise a little bit. Perhaps you just got off your chair, packed up your books and start to walk uh, down the hallway after you sat down in your chair listening to a lecture for a while. If your systemic blood pressure begins to rise, that means that the pressure in the renal arteries rises and ultimately the pressure with which the blood enters into the renal corpuscle is going to be higher and of course that leads to a higher net filtration pressure and you know by now that net filtration pressure is directly correlated with GFR so we're going to see a higher glomerular filtration rate. Sorry that's my dog. Well we need to bring that back down because the kidneys really want that glomerular filtration rate to be at this homeostatic level. And so consequently, we're going to see some feedback mechanisms kick in. If we first focus on that myogenic mechanism, if our systemic blood pressure is rising, leading to that increased glomerular filtration rate, that higher systemic blood pressure is, also, is going to actually stretch the walls or the smooth muscle of the afferent arterioles. And when they are being stretched in order to protect uh, the glomeruli, capillaries in order to ensure that the flow of the blood stays within a certain uh, minimal um, range, we're going to see that the afferent arterioles will respond by vasoconstriction. So this is nothing new. You learned about this myogenic mechanism in the cardiovascular system. And of course, if the afferent arterioles vasoconstrict, less blood will enter into the glomerulus and therefore we're going to see less filtration occurring. So your GFR goes back down to homeostatic levels. So that's the myogenic mechanism. So what about the tubuloglomerular mechanism, which depends on our macula densa cells? And I just noticed that I have a mistake in my slide here, so let's fix that. This should really say the distal convoluted tubules, because it is the distal convoluted tubules that uh, contain those macula densa cells. Remember how the distal convoluted tubule touches onto the arterioles, particularly the afferent arteriole, and where it does, we see a very dense spot called the, the macula densa, right? And these cells are chemoreceptors and osmoreceptors. In other words, when our systemic blood pressure is beginning to rise to where the rate at which filtration occurs is, is going to rise rapidly, we're going to end up with much more of a, a filtrate in our tubules. So we have a high flow rate in our distal convoluted tubules and th those macula densa cells detect that. Not only that, if our blood pressure is higher, then we're going to see much many, many more substances that are filtered out into our renal tubule and if the flow rate is high there is not going to be enough time to reabsorb 
those substances and particularly we can look at something easy and that is sodium. So these osmoreceptors, these macula densa cells that are osmoreceptors slash chemoreceptors, they can detect these changes in solute, particularly sodium. And the sodium levels are going to be high if our glomerular filtration rises due to an increase in systemic blood pressure. Well, how do they respond? Well, they're going to respond by ensuring that once again, vasoconstriction occurs of the afferent arteriole, because if that happens, we can now control the amount of blood entering into the uh, glomerulus and also the pressure because we're increasing the resistance at the level of the afferent arteriole so that the pressure in the glomeruli will decrease some. And so this is accomplished by these macula densa cells actually secreting a chemical that acts as a vasoconstrictor. Okay, so a rise in systemic blood pressure um, is ultimately going to result in vasoconstriction of your afferent arterioles to bring our GFR back down to homeostatic levels. And we can look at it from the opposite point, meaning let's say that our blood pressure is beginning to drop, we were just racing around, you know, quickly straightening out the house before the guests come over, and you know, finally we get to sit down and just have a drink and visit with them. So our GFR begins to drop. That of course means that um, our afferent arterioles are not stretched as much because our blood pressure is dropping. And therefore we're going to see that they will dilate. And why do they need to dilate? Because we need to maintain the flow of blood in the capillaries of the glomerulus and therefore we can bring up our glomerular filtration rate again. So this time our aim is at um, dilating our afferent arteriole. Our macula densa cells are not detecting a fast flow of filtrate. They're not detecting a high concentration of sodium, so they're not going to secrete their typical vasoconstrictor. Again, when that doesn't happen, we're going to see dilation of the afferent arteriole. Now, by the way, we'll see here that um, the hormonal mechanism that could kick in long term will also involve our macula densa cells actually communicating with the juxtaglomerular cells uh, in an attempt to um, fix the glomerular filtration rate. But we'll, we'll look at that in just a little while. So the two slides we just looked at, these two flow charts, we're only looking at the myogenic mechanism and the tubuloglomerular mechanism, which together form the intrinsic regulation of glomerular filtration rate in the kidneys, or the autoregulatory mechanism, meaning a mechanism that is going to work all on its own, independent of what the rest of the body is doing. And when we say the rest of the body, we typically mean the nervous system and our hormones. The other thing to remind you of is that the intrinsic regulation only functions when our blood pressure is within this relatively narrow range. So we're not really doing anything extravagant with our body right now. We're neither pushing it really hard, we're also not bleeding out at this point, right? We're going through our daily normal activities. So in the next video then, we're, we will take a look at the neural mechanisms and hormonal mechanisms. And particularly, um, those hormonal mechanisms are more for long term, while your neural mechanism is going to kick in especially when we're seeing a severe drop in blood pressure. So let's move on to that next video now.